Good evening, I'm Lydia Serrani in for Greg Kelly. Our future as we know it is in peril. Some might say I'm being hyperbolic, maybe even a little hysterical, but when you look at the statistics, our future generation, the children of this country are on a collision course to three places, prison, the graveyard or in line for government assistance. We are seeing this trend most profoundly in our inner cities, specifically those staunch blue democratic cities. In New York City, the NYPD released their end of year statistics on the number of children who have been shot in 2022 alone. 149 shooting victims under the age of 18, 149 and 16 of those kids they're now dead. It's a record number because back in 2017, the city was actually on a good path with 75 children as victims of a shooting. And of course, one child hurt, one child shot is simply, of course, one too many. But sadly, and not shockingly, though, the shooter oftentimes is a child themselves, a, a member of a gang and the victim, often an innocent bystander like the little girl you see right there, 11 year old Kajara Tay shot in the Bronx. Here was Kajara's anguished father begging for justice. My first born, yo. My first. You're supposed to be 12 in December, man. She couldn't even make it, yo. Now I'm going to have to celebrate her birthday without her, man. <laughs> Kajara's alleged killer, only a child himself, basically, a teenager, 15 years old. There he is. Again, no surprise, as more teens than ever are now carrying guns. In New York, this trend of kids with guns, a direct result of legislation which mandates that offenders under the age of 18 be prosecuted in family court. Gangs even know this, so they've now made teens, even preteens, their gun mules. In Philadelphia, city data shows that the number of child gun victims in 2022 alone equals 2015 and 2016 combined. Last year, the sister of brotherly, the city of brotherly love set a record for overall homicides. The number of child murder victims tripled compared to just a few years prior. Experts say the people who pull the trigger are getting younger and younger, and so are those who are being killed. Homicide is now the leading cause of death for children in the United States, with black boys being killed more than any other group. The New York Times now reporting that nationwide gun homicides involving children has increased by more than 73% since 2018. And the weapon of choice, an illegal gun. So what's going on? What exactly did Black Lives Matter do for black lives? The statistics show that since BLM's emergence on the world stage and despite millions of dollars in donations from major organizations, more black lives are being lost than ever before. Hard to comprehend that all of the beautiful faces, innocent faces you're seeing right there are victims of senseless gun violence, warring gangs, small children simply caught in the crossfire and it's only getting worse. The BLM riots causing billions of dollars in damages nationwide. But here's a little uh, reminder of who not only allowed this to happen, but made excuses for it. I know that there are protests still happening in yes. major cities across the United States. I'm just not seeing the reporting on it that I that right, I had that's right. for the first few weeks. That's um, right. But they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. And that's they're not. This is a movement. I'm telling you, they're not going to stop. And and everyone beware because they're not going to stop. It is going to. They're not going to stop before election day in November, and they're not going to stop after election day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up and they should not. And we should not. Our own vice president, who could forget back in June of 2020, Kamala Harris was even attempting to bail those Minnesota protesters out of jail. It's mind boggling to even think about. But of course, BLM was backed by all of those huge corporations. Take a listen. Companies like ours must speak up as allies to the Black Lives Matter movement. It's a critical time for our country. It's a critical time, I think, for business to also be speaking out, speaking up about these issues. I want to address the topic of racism, inequality, and injustice, and to recognize the pain being felt throughout our nation, especially in our black and brown communities after the senseless killing of George Floyd. And don't forget the mainstream media's role in all of this, too. Do you remember how they went out of their way 
to actually glorify the violence. I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly. And they even lied to our faces. Who could forget this now infamous CNN report? What you are seeing, the common theme that ties all of this together is an expression of anger and frustration over what people feel like has become an all too familiar story playing out in places from across the country, not just here in Kenosha. You really got to love that Chiron right there. I mean, the title, fiery but mostly peaceful protest, says the reporter there has a gas mask hanging around his neck in front of a blazing inferno. We had our White House, politicians, corporations, media, pop culture, everybody all encouraging, no, excusing this violence. And all of those people killed and injured during the riots, all of those businesses destroyed, many of them minority owned. Can somebody please tell me what did the progressives, what did these rioters, these radicals achieve by doing all of this? More dead children and kids simply out of control. The number of carjackings in Philadelphia, Chicago, D.C. have tripled, resulting in record numbers. And the suspects, once again, children. We are talking about 11 and 12-year-olds. Who could forget the carjacking case in which a pair of 15-year-old girls killed a 66-year-old delivery driver during a carjacking gone wrong? They should have been in school, but after almost two years of lockdowns forced upon us by Democrat leaders, reading, writing, math, and science scores are down across the country. This seismic shift among our young people, it, it's frightening because while they no longer care about their future, our future as a nation depends on it.